Marlo. Friday chip. Seems like an obvious choice and could trash 10 put things, right? With a Friday chip, like or three times once a day, that's the way to get tokens for about it. Friday chip, Friday chip, Friday chip. Chips, Friday chip. I feel like Friday chip is cheaper and feeds your early game a bit more. As much as I appreciate viewer comments, I can't help but to think this is a lot of talk and very little action. I mean, theory crafting is cheap. Any person can do it, even a lazy person like myself. I can easily justify how good Friday chip is in Kumalo. Friday chip is uh, <coughs> triggered off Freedom Kumalo trashes, giving you extra virus counters, which then feeds into Kumalo's ability. So it's like a positive feedback loop. And if you throw in Tripmano into the mix, you get even more stunning results. You know, Friday Chip is able to clicklessly accelerate the rate at which Tripano gains counters, and when Tripano hits 5 to trash the target ice, it is a trash by the runner, so Tripano triggers Friday Chip, giving Friday Chip a counter as well. See? Not too hard! Anyone can theory craft, but very few people are able to ask the incisive questions uh, that make good for, for good deck building, and very few people actually try out these cards uh, in actual decks to see how good they are. And that's really my problem. Sorry for going on this little rant. Every time I go onto a Netrunner DB, DB list and I see all the comments saying, why don't you play card X or card Y? I'm like, yeah, you can make a, an, a good argument for basically half the cards in the card pool to be in that deck. Then you'll have a 400 card deck. Pretty good deck, must be, since, uh, you know, all that theory crafting holds. No, I don't think so. The truth is, all... Uh, it, it was true back in the core set days and it still is now. We are still constrained by a 45 card deck. Deck slots are scarce, no matter how you look at it. Even as the card pool expands, we are still playing with the same restricted uh, deck of 45 cards for a simple reason. We need consistency. So the real question we should be asking ourselves is not uh, whether Friday Chip is good in Kumalo, because it is. Come on, there's so much synergy. But the real question is, what's the opportunity cost of playing Friday Chip? It's a deck slot you're taking up, a deck slot that isn't economy, it, that isn't draw, that isn't breaker, helping you break ice, and it isn't multi-access. You need to have a very, very good reason to play Friday Chip, and you have to acknowledge that by including Friday Chip, you're not including a certain card, draw card, a certain economy card that is going to make your games a lot more consistent, a lot better. And the more such cards you include, like Virus Breeding Ground and Not, not Carry, thanks Tris for, com uh, for correcting my um, pronunciation on that, the worse your deck, deck gets, it's, it's, that, it's that simple. Um, at the end of the day, all these cards don't help you break ice or get into servers. They're pretty useless by themselves, so you don't win the game just by installing these cards. What's my solution to that? If I'm going to play Friday Chip, I think I need to cut the chef, I need to reduce the setup overhead, and that means cutting the console. It's a pretty bold radical move considering that consoles are above the power level um, for typical hardware because of its one-off uh, design restriction. However, Friday Chip does have its upsides over Not Carry, firstly, sorry, Not Carry. Uh, firstly, in that it is way cheaper to install, and secondly, that it's not restricted to one trigger per turn. Uh, Friday Chip can trigger multiple times per turn. The more you trash, the more Friday Chip virus counters you get. So, uh, because of that, I think I can justify playing Friday Chip as a not-carry not replacement, but that entails ensuring that my entire rig doesn't exceed 4MU. This in turn means that we are not playing that many viruses. After taking into account the standard breakers, we are left with just one MU for the Trypanos that we mentioned were good with Friday Chip. And also consume, which consumes, haha, no memory. So that's the deck list, and even then you'll notice that we are still running over the 45 cards that we aim for, simply because I can't find another card to cut. Uh, we'll be reducing our consistency in one way, some way, shape, or form if we do. Uh, if you cut the turning wheel, you're losing multi-access. Uh, if you're cutting economy or card draw, that's not good either. And you really need ice cover if you're going to use the inefficient uh, uh, conspiracy breaker suite. So there you go. That's our 46 card list that we'll pit be pitting up against Barum, whom some of you might know is uh, one of the most famous HB affectionados out there. 
ever since engineering the future, the identity has rotated. I wonder if Barum can still find any cool HP decks to play with. Well, this is when we find out what he's up to. Once again, I'll be doing a recording of me watching a video recording, so I ex uh, do excuse me if there are any, there's any choppiness in the video. Now, our opening hand is actually fairly amazing. Um, whenever you see double mining accident, you can be prepared to jump for joy. Uh, here, the real problem, however, is that we are playing up against, of all identities, custom biotics. I hate it when I'm always up against these unknown decks. You never know what they're gonna pack, especially with custom biotics because there's so much influence under the hood. So they could be literally running anything from a pure glacier to hard hitting news with boom, and it's the latter that I'm really afraid about. We can't turn one run archives, double mining accident, go down to one credit, and then have them drop a hard hitting news on us that we cannot recover from. Because of that one reason, we are actually forced to mulligan. So our opponent will start by watching how our opponent opens. Uh, it looks like they can't be bothered with ice. Instead, they're going to... To... What the f***? No, seriously. What the flying f***? You spent four influence on this sh Oh, ah, Barum. You, Barum, you, 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 out, you outdone yourself again. Wow. Um, wow, okay, I'm not really sure how to respond to that, but you know, screw you because I have double show gamma in my opening hand, so I'm just gonna run the remote and trash all the damn things. First the Adonis, then the Breaker Bay Grid. I'm not too concerned about the Rex Studio, like it's not really doing much, and I would prefer to trash it later on with virus counters rather than actually spending real money anyway. So here, uh, Barum keeps up the pressure, uh, putting ice and now a bunch of stuff on the Rex Studio, forcing me to check again because uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Rex Studio, firstly, I don't blame you. Secondly, you can host both assets and agendas on it. So you've got to keep checking it because it could be an agenda that is being snuck past me, perhaps even with a G's model Barroids. We see, of all things, an IT department. Seriously, we are playing this sort of game, huh? Okay, I guess. I guess I'm gonna try to trash it. That's going in the bin along with this Adonis. No. No. You can have the Adonis. It's gonna cost you 4 to res it anyway, and I can always contest it at a later time. I want to set up my Liberator accounts here, because I had 6 credits, trashing Adonis would bring me down to 3, unable to play the Liberator accounts as a result. Instead, now by setting up the Liberator, I can now afford to click one run and attempt to contest the Adonis. So my opponent doesn't res here, which is really good for me because now the Adonis is going to go in the bin. And yeah, as you notice, I haven't really been using Kumalo's ability yet. Uh, only using it on the Breaker Bay Grid. Uh, because I didn't have Virus Breeding Ground in my opening hand, I'm not able to trash using the res cost. And anyway, Adonis is really expensive at 4 res cost. Um, funny enough though, with a Breaker Bay Grip up, the res cost of all the cards in the server would have been 0. So, actually, what I should have done in my opening turn was to use Kumalo's ability to trash the Rex Studio itself because the Rex Studio would have a rest cost of 0 after being lowered by Breaker Bay Grid. I could have done that, I should have done that. Instead, I trashed the Breaker Bay Grid and now Rex Studio is at standard 2 rest cost, which I cannot afford. Obviously, I have no viruses out. So yeah, I think that's a very interesting uh, post-game realization I made there. I don't think either of us uh, made that observation uh, during the game itself. And I didn't think of it until now that I'm mentioning it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so uh, we get our basic economy and draw going. Uh, thankfully, we have both of those cards in, in abundance. And now we are very tempted to play the dirty laundry in our hand. Uh, the fun thing is, because we are on 4 credits, we can actually increase the value we get out of Dirty Laundry. Instead of just getting 3 credits and a card access, we can potentially get a virus uh, Friday chip trigger as well, if we hit something that's trashable. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to install Friday chip first, before dropping the Dirty Laundry onto HQ here. 
We hit tap startup, this is zero to res and one to trash. I don't have the credits to trash it, but I have the zero virus counters to uh, Kumalo trash it. So we are going to get the Kumalo trigger, we are going to get a Friday chip counter. So that was very nice, uh, uh, very conveniently getting the virus counter and then I'm emptying my last shred of money with the Liberator accounts. Meanwhile, my opponent has uh, stabilized with the economy. Marilyn campaign is now ticking in the remote and I can't really contest it. One virus counter on Friday chip, not enough to trash the Marilyn. So we'll have to think of some other way to deal with, deal with things as we draw into three tripanos, two breakers, too many programs here really. Let's play the inject and we get career fair lip accounts which is a very welcome sight. It's gonna see a, a Rex Studio there, I'm not gonna bother trashing it since there's already one in the server. And we're just gonna pitch all our breakers in the bin, get more money out with the Liberator account and yeah, prepare to start uh, making more runs as time goes on. So R&D is still wide open, but there's an, you know, I'm really tempted to run server one here. There's a new item in the remote. I'd like to check out what it is. And given that it's HB, I should be able to click through whatever this uh, ice is. Fairchild 2, Fairchild 3, you name it, I click it. Except that it's a titanium. Okay, I do have paperclip here. So that's going to get broken. And let's see what our opponent shows us here. MC Austerity, oh, we are playing that kind of deck, huh, okay. So, I mean, just surveying the whole situation, with only one virus counter, the only thing that is Kumalo trashable here is the MC Austerity that I'm accessing now at one risk cost. So obviously I'm going to use the Kumalo trigger here and regain the virus counter from Friday Chip. So yeah, Friday Chip, you know, uh, is a positive feedback loop with itself, which is pretty cool. So we get that in the bin, we can't disrupt our opponent's Maryland economy because we are still too poor at this stage, but that's fine. Now, I'm going to do something really curious here. Uh, with my remaining clicks, um, well, okay, this part is not curious. Obviously, I'm just going to hit R&D here, perhaps get a cheap uh, trash or something. I see a rotor turret, that's good information. You always want to get free accesses while you can, but here, the curious move uh, is here. I took money off Liberated and I played Trippano on the Unres HQ Ice. This seems like a very suboptimal play. You almost never want to put Trippano on Unres Ice because you'd rather put it on Res Ice so that you waste um, your opponent's investment in that said ice uh, in its rest cost. Whereas if you put it on unrest ice, they can simply override the Trippano with a new piece of ice and they, they are, your opponent hasn't lost much. You trade one of your clicks and two of your credits in installing the Trippano for your opponent's one click in installing HQ Ice. So the reasons for doing this are twofold. Firstly, my opponent doesn't seem to have drawn much ice. Well, they are about to draw some, but as you can see, R&D has been undefended for the longest time. And secondly, while Titonium is obviously a better target, unfortunately, there's the clause on Titonium that states it cannot host cards. So Trippano on Titonium is out. In fact, Titonium is actually one of the best counters against uh, Trippano, and it's super annoying that I had to go up against the one bloody corp that's actually running Titonium as the barrier. Well done, you! <coughs> I guess I'm not gonna trash that Titonium anytime soon. So, uh, back on me, I know there's a Rototara on R&D and I know that my uh, Trippano is ticking up to two virus counters. You know what time it is? It's time to kill the Rex Studio. That's why I put the Trippano there. I mentioned some good reasons for installing the Trippano but the main reason I wanted to get it down was to gain a virus counter. 1 plus 1 makes 2, the 1 on my virus fr uh, Friday chip plus the 1 on my Trippano allows me to trash Rex Studio. Rex Studio currently has a trash cost of 9 because it hosts 2 cards. But I'm going to change that 9 uh, trash cost to a two, 0 trash cost by using 2 virus counters instead, gaining the Friday chip trigger while I'm at it. Essentially completely uh, destroying my opponent's remote and making them really sad. That's the Achilles heel of Rex Studio. It hates Imp, but it also hates Kumalo just as much. I think my opponent did not see that coming at all, and now they're going to really struggle uh, to recover from this trash. As you see them installing ice on a remote instead of overwriting my Trippano, that's not a good idea. Uh, letting this Trippano tick up is a really bad idea for a lot of reasons. Here I make a misplay, I should have dropped the virus breeding ground instead of the liberated account. Um, 
because well you want to get virus breeding ground ground tri uh, ticking down as much as possible. You see in the chat box, my opponent Barum uh, mentions that um, I'm making their life really difficult because I drew a shit ton of money cards in my first 15 cards. And that's true, I basically drew two of each money card, two gambles, two laundries, two liberated accounts, and you see in my hand, I'm still not done. I have two stim hacks ready to fire. Uh, that being said, I haven't drawn any of my daily cards though. Daily cards is amazing because you get five credits with one click. Uh, it's the best clickless economy for most decks. Um, but I didn't draw any just yet. They are all stuck at the bottom of my deck. So a fairly average draw, it just so happens that I'm playing a shit ton of economy in my deck. That's what makes a good deck, right? We'll talk more about this later, uh, the fact that I saw a lot of money cards in my opening. For now, my opponent uh, dropped something in server 1 as usual, I wonder whether to go for it, blah blah blah. Nah, I'm too poor, let's take 12 credits, install Virus Breeding Ground. As my opponent uses tech startup to fetch something. Very well. Let's see what my opponent has in store for me. It's MC Austerity. Fine by me. Um, as I mentioned in the remote enforcement video, MC Austerity is not a very big threat uh, because they are not rushing. It's a slow card. So I can afford to do dodo on for two or three turns before I have to deal with this threat. In the meantime, my triple is just gonna trash the ice on HQ. It was on four counters, but virus breeding ground click allowed me to trash the HQ ice. That trash triggered Friday chip, so I get a Friday chip virus counter. Hmm, Friday chip getting a lot of triggers this game, and now I can go ham on my opponent's HQ, fetching a uh, Project Vitruvius, and on my last click, hitting Chrisium Grid, not gonna trash that, too expensive, doesn't really do much against me. Looking pretty good here, as my opponent continues clicking the MC Austerity, but not icing HQ. Big mistake, let's go in for 3 HQ runs. First run, remote enforcement. Oh, I'm very happy to see that agenda because they could easily score that agenda next turn had they had I not stolen that. So this is why we are running HQ here. We want to clear out our opponent's hand of 5-3 agendas and 4-2 agendas so that their MC austerity in the remote is virtually useless. We hit a rec studio here again. This is not a threatening card at all. We saw how easily Kumalo deals with it. I can afford to let my opponent skate by with this rec studio. I'm gonna save my Kumalo trigger for more meaningful cards like this one, Marilyn Campaign. Not gonna let my opponent even get the chance to uh, reshuffle it back into the deck. It's going straight to the bin as my opponent greedily goes for the three counter MC austerity. Not that I blame them, I mean, I stole the remote enforcement from their hand, so they couldn't score it right there and then. Now, I have stim hack, don't forget. So I'm gonna drop the clone chip because I don't want to lose it to brain damage and stim hack into the remote, ensuring that I'm gonna get this MCA trash. We see a Turing, which is easily broken by a uh, Black Orchestra Ice Carver. This is why I run Ice Carver in this deck. Um, already uh, on my first ice break, it's doing massive work. Both, it saves me three credits on the Turing because I don't have to boost the Black Orchestra one more time, and it says 1 credit on the Tetonium, bringing it down to 4 strength, allowing me to break it for 3 credits instead of 4. I mean, it costs 3 to install, but Ice Carver just saved me 4 credits right there, amazing card. And of course, trash MCA for free with Virus Counter. Now my opponent's really struggling, I've just dismantled their remote fairly easily, and I still have a lot of money in the boot to spare. They uh, desperately go for the same, uh, what the f play in uh, Rex Studio and break the grid, but by this point I can ignore the remote and go for centrals. I'm gonna force the Roto Turret rest here. I knew it was a Roto Turret, I knew I had MK Ultra. Let's fetch an, a convenient agenda off the top of R&D. Hey, convenient mining accident, let's play that, force them to take a bad pub. This will make my central runs that much cheaper. Uh, running R&D costs 2 credits instead of 3, that's a really big deal as I'm starting to run out of card draw cards, uh, which means I'm going to run out of money sooner rather than later. Triple no continues taking down. Again, this is not an ideal target to use triple no on. Uh, Turing is relatively cheap at 3 to break. Uh, there are lots more expensive ice out there. I'm thinking Fairchild 3. I'm thinking, um, you know, there's an, okay, just trust me. Archangel, a lot of Tobuf, a lot of other ice that's ex expensive. The reason I put the triple no there was because I knew that remote runs are going to cost money one way or another because of that bloody titonium that I can't kill. So this means that uh, in order to make remote runs efficient, I need to reduce the number of ice on the remote as much as possible. So every bit helps, that's why I'm just tossing the random titonium, uh, sorry, triple no on the Turing. 
reducing the remote running tax by 3 is going to help a lot in the long run. As we continue drawing up, we find even more economy. I'm going to run R&D and gain money out of it, seeing a titanium, then drop a daily cast. By this point, having seen all the influence spent on Rex Studio, I don't really believe my opponents on hard-hitting news, and given that they are on IT department and MCA, probably not on boom. So I am able to end my turn on few credits. Now my opponent installed something new in the server one, but again, I'm not that concerned. They can score a Vitruvius for all I care. Now I want to pressure centrals or I can build up my board, both of which are fairly good options, especially the building board part. Again, I'm running low on uh, sustained economy, so it's good that I'm drawing the daily cast at this point that I can play right now. This should give me enough economy to close out the game within the next four turns. That's when both daily casts completely pay out. We proceed with my opponent super icing the remote and advancing what now seems to be an agenda in the remote. Could be a bait, it could be NGO front, but you know, it looks like something that we should contest at any rate. So, can I make it through the remote? Do I want to click for credits before running the remote or do I run in straight and try to click through those Fairchild 3s? It's a tough question. Um, after some thought, I decided to just go hit on. The bad pub will help, so I'll have 9 credits with which to break 3 pieces of ice that cost a total of 10 or fewer credits to res. Seems doable, hopefully. Worst case scenario, if I can't get through to the end, I'll just jack out and pressure, su pressure some other server instead. Uh, it is kind of a high risk gambit, but the problem is I can't allow my opponent to score a remote enforcement. That would be terrible. Uh, that would multiply the amount of money I need to get past the remote. And as good as Tripano is against remote enforcement, it's going to take a while for Tripano to tick up. So I'm going to break Seder Adaptive Barrier for one cheaper because of Ice Carver. going to break Enigma. And I realize I have three credits left, exactly enough to break the Titonium because Ice Carver makes it one cheaper. My opponent knows that's an agenda, so they can see it, and I win the game pretty handily. As dominating a performance as that was, we have to be critical about an analyzing how effective our cards were. What was Friday Chip's com contribution to my deck this game? Well, it did a bit of work, uh, I'm not gonna lie. The ability to gain virus counters to trash Full Immersion Rec Studio was huge, right? Uh, I didn't start with any other virus counter cards and you know didn't really have many good targets for Trippano, but being able to get that trash was huge because it basically reset my opponent uh, to square one, saving me 9 credits in the process. I was struggling for credits most of the way. I mean, not in the sense I had to click for credits, um, but you know, I had to ration them carefully, and being able to Kumalo trash all that nonsense instead of paying real credits, that's a big deal. And I know this comes rather late on, on episode 7 of Exploring Kumalo, but well, better late than never. It's good to note that Kumalo is a really good answer to corporate effects that increase the trash cost of cards. Besides Full Immersion Rec Studio, which gets more expensive to trash the more hosted cards there are, we have two big culprits in Industrial Genomics and Oak Town Grid, both of which can make trashing cards really oppressive. Friday Chip says, or rather Kumalo says, nope. Um, I'm going to ignore your trash cost boost, I'm only looking at the reds cost. And it's, again, I'll repeat it, it's really quite funny how Kumalo interacts with Breaker Bay Grid, which provides a constant effect to all cards in the server. Uh, for most cards, it effectively reduces their reds cost to zero, allowing you to trash them for free with Kumalo, which is really funny. In that sense, Breaker Bay Grid might actually be more of a hindrance than a boon to the corp. Right, but that's Kumalo. What else did Friday Chip do? Well, Friday Chip allowed us to accelerate our HQ Trippano. Now, this is something I'm not going to downplay the importance of. I really appreciate the fact that um, Trippano now takes down faster, unlike in uh, you know the Hive Mind episode where we had to click the Hive Mind so laboriously with Virus Breeding Ground just to get uh, Trippano to a spot where you can insta trash ice. Trippano here isn't insta trashing ice, but it's fast enough that you know it. The Trippano isn't hogging the memory slot, and that's quite important in a deck that runs no memory cards. The HQ Trippano in particular allow us to fetch four agenda points of HQ. I don't recall what the HQ ice was, but 
uh, at least I didn't have to break it with real credits. It was really nice to just waltz into my opponent's HQ, uh, unguarded, and just, you know, nick all the agendas off that they couldn't get rid of. However, all these uh, effects were not possible, you know, towards the end I was getting lots of virus counters on Friday Chip and Virus Breeding Ground, but this was a snowball effect. Vi Friday Chip is a very snowbally card because uh, virus tokens tend to lead to more trashes, which lead to more virus, uh, Friday Chip counters and so on. But you need to start from somewhere, and we ask ourselves, what kicked off this snowball effect for Friday Chip? Don't forget, I installed it without any other virus support cards or virus programs early on. If you remember, it all started with the unguarded HQ, the dirty laundry run to HQ, where I managed to access the tech startup that was trash for free. That was what got me my first Friday chip counter, and that's what allowed me to make the Rex Studio play uh, between the one Friday chip counter and the one triple counter. Without the first Friday chip counter, I would never have gotten to the point where I could contest the Rex Studio, which allowed me to trash court cards, which gave me virus counters, which allowed me to do a lot more stuff. So basically what I'm trying to say is, Friday chip does not have the potential to snowball if you don't have access in the first place. And you can't get access- well, I got lucky in this game, uh, Byram didn't draw that many ice, which he should've, but uh, if the corp draws well enough, you need to have good economy and good draw in order to make those accesses because you have to break ice, and even after the run, you have to survive what the corp throws at you, be it hard-hitting news or a Brian Stinson that propels them into the lead. Money is so fundamental to this game, I can't stress that enough. That's why a lot of my Kumalo shells all feature career fair, dirty laundry, liberated accounts, daily cars, show sure gamble, often all maxed out. A third of my deck is economy, and with good reason. Without these cards, you can't have the consistent opening you want to snowball with your virus cards, and that's what's important. Because just playing virus cards isn't enough, especially for Friday Chip. You want to be actively running, pressuring the corp, forcing them to res ice so that you can drop your triple nodes on res ice, access that HQ, trash the tech startups, get Friday Chip counters. So many things are possible only if you have the capital to begin with. So when Baram said that I had a shit ton of money in my first 15 cards, I was like, well, a third of my deck is Econ. Of course I'm going to see all my money uh, consistently. Uh, as compared to someone who's building a jank Kumalo deck full of virus cards and virus support cards, they are never going to be able to make as many runs as I did because they just don't have the money to repeatedly break the ice that I could easily break. So I guess that's the learning point from this video. Um, <clears throat> you playing every uh, virus card or virus support card is a slot that could be used to play more economy or draw. You need to have a very good reason to be playing those virus cards over uh, standard economy and draw cards. And I think this deck strikes a pretty good balance between accumulating virus counters and getting your game going because economy is a universal want. You want it against no matter what deck your corp is running. If I could pay for my cards, uh, you know, my Earthrise Hotels, my Knob Carries, or, you know, my Triple Nose, if I could pay for those cards with virus tokens instead of credits, then we'll be to singing a completely different tune. But as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm forced to pay credits to install my cards, I've got to have those credits. Economy is king. Thanks for watching and happy net running. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.